Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Mahindra Holidays and Resorts in India Limited Q3 and 9 months FY24 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A brief question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star and zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Mr. Kavinder Singh, Managing Director and CEO. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our quarter three FY24 earnings call. On the call with me today, we have Mr. Ram Mundra, our interim CFO. You can find our quarterly results and investor presentation referred to in our remarks today on the stock exchanges and our company website. I sincerely hope you have had a chance to go through them. Uh, I think let me start a little bit with the industry. Uh, at an industry level, uh, occupancy is around stable at around 61 to 63%. However, ADRs were trending. Uh, significantly higher at around Rs. 8,500 in December, uh, mainly due to the after effects of the events like G20 and of course the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup. Domestic air passenger traffic continues to grow, recording an all-time high in 2023 with 150 million passengers versus 144 million passengers in 2019. December 2023 recorded the highest I think highest ever monthly traffic with about 27 million uh, domestic passengers. This quarter we have delivered a very robust performance uh, at an operational level and at a financial level. We have been able to achieve the highest ever third quarter member additions of 4,708 members which is up by 13% YOY. Our cumulative member base, base now stands at 2,92,861 families, 85% of whom are fully paid. Membership sales value, including upgrades at rupees 212 crores, is up by 13% YOY. We have achieved the highest ever quarterly upgrades of rupees 57 crores. This is a growth of about 16% YOY, demonstrating the rising satisfaction of our existing members. We are very happy with this situation. Cash position is at a very healthy 1301 crores as on 31st December 2023. We received an income tax refund of about 66 crores, which includes an interest of about rupees 6.5 crores. Our deferred revenue pool has increased by rupees 67 crores to rupees 5,512 crores. Our members have enjoyed superior service delivery, new immersive experiences in resorts, resulting in 84% occupancy on expanded inventory. Our occupancy, we believe, was uh, impacted due to, it could have been higher, due to flooding in Sikkim, which happened in early October, and slower recovery in Himachal and Uttarakhand, which was affected earlier by heavy rainfall and landslides. That there was a bit of a slow recovery that happened in October and November. Improved digital penetration in India is helping us accelerate our member relations through digital route. Our revamped digital infrastructure and use of technology across touch points along with higher member satisfaction has helped us deliver 57% of our member additions through referral and digital routes. We are unlocking the power of data like never before through advanced analytics, data science based propensity models to improve efficiencies and drive growth in member spends, collections, referrals and upgrades. Our in-house developed tool uh, resort Inventory Yield Optimizer is also helping us in inventory optimization. Our booking through our own online channels is at about 81%. This quarter, our inventory base has expanded by 124 keys to 5,129 keys, 44 of which were added through the expansion of our Goa Asanora Resort, which is now the largest Mahindra Holidays Resort with 244 keys. This financial year, so far, we have commenced two new greenfield projects, 236 keys at Ganpati Phule and 152 keys at Tio. We have completed one acquisition, 72 keys resort in Jaipur. We have completed one expansion project, and we have one ongoing at Kandagat, Himachal. 
Kandagad Himachal is a 72 key resort which is expanded by 185 keys to make it a 257 keys flagship resort. This all adds up to about 835 crores of capex for five greenfield, oblique brownfield, oblique acquisition projects and about 700 keys approximately. We are rapidly expanding our inventory and we have also talked about our inventory aspiration in our investor deck. In addition to this, two more expansion projects are expected to, expected to commence in next few quarters. This will expand the existing resort at Puducherry by 62 keys to make it a 187 keys resort and recently acquired Treehouse Jaipur Resort by 54 keys to create a 126 keys resort. But uh, public-private participation is an integral part, TPP is an integral part of the inventory expansion strategy. I mentioned earlier also, we have been actively engaging with various state governments to identify suitable land parcels or resorts to be taken through PPP route. We are running a resort right now in Janjali, Himachal through PPP engagement. Other PPP discussions include an in-principle approval for the land parcel at Sonpur Beach, Odisha. This is in addition to the earlier approved land parcel in Odisha at Chilka Lake. Last quarter, we had signed an MOU with Uttarakhand government for an investment of rupees 1,000 crores. In this regard, four land parcels have already been identified and shortlisted so far. This quarter, we have signed an MOU with the Tamil Nadu government for rupees 800 crores investment. In addition, we are exploring various other states and discussions are underway. Our sustainability targets include carbon neutrality by 2040 through EP100, RE100 and science-based targets. 17 of our resorts are net zero waste to landfill certified. Two resorts have been added this quarter. Uh, 14 Mahindra Holidays Resorts are green resorts, platinum certified by IGBC, India Green Building Council. Uh, as far as solar power con is concerned, we have 21% of our total energy demand coming through the solar uh, and we added 415 kilowatts at Goa Asanora. Our goal is to have 100% renewable energy by 2050. We are well uh, on target and we will definitely achieve it much earlier. We have recycled. 408 million liters of water in nine months of this year, which is 62% of the total water consumption by our resorts. Two of our resorts are net water positive. Our resort, Madikeri, is India's first net zero certified resort in all three categories, net zero waste, net zero energy, and net zero water. Our, let me move on to now the standalone financial highlights, which you may have seen, but I will run through that rather fast. We have in this quarter achieved highest ever quarterly total income of course, excluding one-offs at rupees 363 crores, which is 8% up YOY. Our EBITDA at 111 crores, 12% YOY. EBITDA margin at 30.5% up by 120 basis on YOY. PBT at 62 crores, 11% year-on-year basis. PBT margin at 17.1%, which is up by 40 bits on YOY basis. Our resort income at a very healthy 88 crores. Cash position at rupees 31 crores, which I have already talked about, includes income tax refund of 66 crores, which includes 6.5 crores uh, as interest. If I were to look at nine months performance, this is the highest ever nine months total performance, uh, excluding one-offs. Our income at 1047 crores is 11% YOY. Uh, resort income at about 251 crores, 3% YOY increase. EBITDA at about 310 crores, 16% YOY, EBITDA margin at 29.6%, up by 120 basis points on YOY basis. Profit before tax at rupees 166 crores is 15% up YOY, PBT margin at 16%, 15.9%, up by 50 bips on YOY basis. Let me move on to holiday club resorts. Uh, the market challenges continue with the Russia-Ukraine war. Fundamentally, the consumer sentiment is weak in the Finland economy and inflation has fortunately slowed down to 3.5%, though still higher than normal, and Euribor 12 has stabilized at around 3.6%, from as high as 45 to 5%, which was a few months ago. If I were to look at Holiday Club Resorts' performance, despite the current geopolitical situation, weak consumer sentiment, HCR has delivered steady performance versus previous year. Timeshare sales has grown by 14% YOY on account of better sales realization. Uh, and this is because most of the, you know, Finns uh, aspire to own a second home. However, in the current inflationary environment, a mortgage is unaffordable due to higher interest rates. 
Since timeshare comes at a lower transaction price, it emerges as a strong alternative to a second home. Holiday Club Resorts has reduced its operating losses by 47% this quarter, uh, which has definitely been aided by improved operational efficiencies. Uh, finance cost has increased due to rising Euribor rates. Q4 is seasonally a strong quarter due to winter holidaying season and spa hotel occupancies pick up driven by domestic demand and international visitors. We are continuing to monitor the geopolitical situation and focus on implementing cost efficiency measures will continue throughout the year. If I were to look at the consolidated uh, numbers, our total income at 656.7 crores uh, at consolidated level again is the highest ever. It is up by 10% on a YOY basis. EBITDA at 130.5 crores is 8% up YOY basis. EBITDA margin at about 19.9%. Profit before tax is at about 11.8 crores. If I were to look at nine-month performance console level, 6% up at 1976.5 crores. Uh, if I were to look at EBITDA, uh, it is 6% up at about rupees 400.6 crores. EBITDA margin at 20.3% and PBT is at 51.6 crores. To conclude, let me just build on the fact what is the opportunity in front of us. We have significant headroom for growth in our country. Tourism's GDP contribution in India is projected to be $443 billion in FY33 versus $194 billion in pre-COVID. Government has a vision to make India a trillion-dollar tourism economy by 2047. Promotion of tourism is further enhanced by the long-term interest-free loans announced during interim budget to states for developing tourist destinations. This will promote domestic travel and we are going to be the biggest beneficiaries of that since we are present in leisure destinations and we are present far and wide. Also, the macros, macros are supporting these growth forecasts. As per the recent research reports, India's affluent consumers uh, has been growing at around 13% CAGR between FY19 to FY13 and it is estimated to follow a similar trend in the next few years. Higher gap in per capita consumption versus other large economies. In China, Brazil, the per capita consumption in leisure, hotels, recreation, out-of-home food is 18 to 20 times that of India. From supply side also, India is highly underpenetrated. Uh, number of leisure branded rooms in India is mainly 28,000. The overall branded room count is 1.6 lakhs versus a city like Dubai, which has 1.65 lakh branded rooms and growing. We at Mahindra Holidays are well poised to take advantage of the leisure travel boom in India. Uh, through, the, uh, do, through what we have spoken about and we are very confident that we will take advantage of the growing discretionary income amongst affluent homes. This is how we will realize the huge potential target market that is India. Thank you for your time this evening. I would like to now open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star and two if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while we poll for questions. Our first question is from the line of Ankit Kanodia with SmartSync Service. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers, at least in the standalone uh, business, uh, the India business. So, uh, sir, my first question is related to the uh, to the BAC communication which we have done today in the morning regarding uh, you stepping out. So, this is. Uh, if you can throw some more light on that, as, as what I see is over the last nine, ten years, uh, you and your team has worked really hard. And now, when the actual fruits were about to uh, to show up, and uh, if you can share more reasons as to why you are stepping down, that would be very helpful. That is my first question. Uh, so, uh, thank you for asking this question. But you have seen in the press release that. You know, Mahindra Holidays is in a very good shape. We have 100 plus resorts, 5,000 plus keys, and we have now a billion dollar market cap. And we have worked, as you rightly said, very hard to bring the company to this level. And I must say that, uh, you know, as far as I am concerned, personally, 
uh, I am looking forward to another opportunity uh, that I am likely to take up and that you will know in some time. It's not yet public and it cannot be made public. But if I were to talk about Mahindra Holidays, Mahindra Holidays is in a very strong position and I'm actually very, very proud that we have a great team and we have built the business to this level. And we have also uh, taken on a very, very strong target of building a very uh, big pipeline of inventory and a lot of good work has already happened. And as far as I am concerned, Manoj, who comes in from the group, who is the group CFO, uh, has, uh, you know, has been chosen as the rightful uh, next leader. And I am very confident that under his leadership, uh, Mahindra Holidays will scale greater heights. So at this moment of time, uh, this is my response to your question. Thank you so much, sir, for the answers. Uh, my second question is related to, so sir, when we, uh, it's related to the business, uh, so when we look at all the numbers which are showing really good trajectory in terms of maybe it is, uh, whether it is uh, new number addition, whether it is uh, getting new uh, resorts or increasing the resort number or room count, or maybe in terms of uh, vacation ownership income, and uh, all numbers are showing a good uh, base of growth, but why our resort income is not growing? So if, even if it is growing, it is growing at very uh, small single digit. Uh, in fact, in this quarter, it has slightly regrown. Yeah. Can you throw some light on that? Yeah. So resort income uh, in Q2 and Q3, both the quarters has been impacted by the seasonal factors of heavy rains, landslides in Himachal, Uttarakhand, because even in October, November, people were not coming to the Himachal and Uttarakhand because once people sort of see in the news, and though our resorts were running, and I mean, we still did very good occupancies, but obviously we lost some room nights in both Himachal, Uttarakhand, and in the month of uh, October, we had the Sikkim problem, the glacial lake outburst, and even in October, November, the people were taking time to come. So it's clearly a loss caused by seasonal factors. I can confirm to you that our January is very, very robust. We are trending at about 87% in the month of January. Rather, trending means it's already done. We are at 87%. We are expecting this quarter to be probably our best ever quarters in terms of occupancy at around 87, 88% Jan, Feb, March. And this is something that we can foresee because we have bookings on hand. And you will definitely see an uptick in the resort revenues because when the occupancies are up and we are able to constantly engage with our members, you know, the good thing is that our upgrades are high. So obviously our members are happy and therefore they are upgrading. And now the question is that are we able to offer sufficient number of room nights uh, as a result of all the problems that I mentioned, seasonal problems. And those problems are behind us now. So we are looking forward to an uptick in resort revenue also. It is something that we are watching and very careful to see how we can uh, do it. There is another thing that you may want to note that there is some amount of revenue of resort which is, uh, you know, coming through a subsidiary company, uh, which is where we two of our resorts are there and those, those revenues are not visible to you. So if I were to add those revenues, we are at about 96 crores, not 88 crores. That is why we are not very, not at all concerned about the uh, resort revenues. And uh, we are very, very clear that it was seasonal. It had those issues which were caused by the people feeling that should I be going, not going. And that is what affected our, uh, you know, resort revenue uptake. Uh, but... Now that we are streamlined, as I said already, we should be looking at a great quarter again, Jan, Feb, March, uh, as we move ahead in terms of both occupancy and revenue. Thank you so much, sir. That was very helpful. Uh, one last question related to the PPP projects, uh, which we have initiated uh, in the last few quarters. And I think uh, we discussed on length about the intricacies of this project. I just want to take one view from yourself. Uh, since you have been in part of discussing with uh, several uh, state governments now, uh, any ballpark, uh, as in I'm not looking for a, an exact number, but any qualitative and quantitative assessment of how big this can be for Mahindra holidays, maybe two, three years from now, these initiatives, apart from what we are already doing right now. Yeah, difficult to sort of put in a number because, you know, what happens when you're dealing with the government, uh, 
first stage is that we need to sign agreements with them and then we either take over the resort like in janjali it happened in 9 months so now it depends on every state at what speed things will move uh, at this moment of time the things that are moving reasonably fast for us are in odisha and in uttarakhand and i would say that in time to come uh, i am pretty confident that we will see a lot of movement in ap also andhra pradesh also so the thing is i if you get a land then there is a time to sort of break the ground because you need approvals and single window approvals is what we are looking for and then you build the property second if you get a resort already existing resort of tourism department corporation and those are not uh, there too much in our bag right now that could have created a bit of a quicker scale up but this will be a to take the land you build and we can build fast we have a lot of technologies to build fast and that's what we will aim to but i think uh, of the green field projects that we will build i think it should become reasonably significant part of our strategy and remember one thing we are not waiting for these only to play out we are parallelly buying land which we don't talk about we have land with us and we are buying land uh, private lands and that's something that we normally don't talk about but there's there's a lot of work happening there as well thank you so much sir that uh, for the detailed answer and uh, all the best to the company and all the best to you personally as well in your future endeavors thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder if you wish to ask a question please press star and 1 our next question is from the line of mulesh savla with shah and savla company please go ahead uh, thanks for taking my questions am i audible yes please okay so congratulations on uh, uh, good uh, stand alone numbers and uh, uh, congratulations for increasing uh, many members new members but uh, i somewhere look at from the long term growth perspective uh, somewhere i feel that in an attempt to increase the number of new members are we not increasing uh, dissatisfactions among the existing members and probably you know the shift of uh, seasons from uh, Uh, red to purple probably you were talking about upgrades is the reason of this satisfaction because people don't want to break head with your administrative uh, office for uh, reservation and all and that's why they are converting their red membership to purple and things like that i i come up uh, come to this conclusion due to certain reasons uh previously when we uh, uh, onboarded our uh, me- existing members in in early days we informed our members that red season is by and large the top season only the diwali and christmas seven days seven days each would be the purple season and you will be able to book and enjoy membership throughout the year we also informed and promised our members that gift of the days you can do to your near and dear ones whenever you wish to do that but when i look at the current terms and conditions i see lot of those promises are taken away and we have gone back on our wording not only that i have noticed in the recent past at one of our resort we unilaterally uh you know cancelled booking of the members at the last moment without caring for their alternative arrangement or uh, making good their damages of last moment booking elsewhere so i personally feel that a uh, uh, lot of uh, ground level uh, work is required to be done to you know keep existing members uh, satisfied otherwise maybe we may grow uh, membership numbers at present but somewhere down the line we may face the challenges your views on this uh you have asked many questions rolled into one yes but ultimately it, it relates to the long term growth story of the company 
and generally i would not have like to you know raise such questions uh, in uh, public on a phone call but uh, i feel that your uh, lower level people are not responsive and uh, members like us have no choice but to you know uh, come up uh, uh, somewhere like this so here is my suggestion since you said members like us uh, we have lots of investors who would be in interested or analysts interested in understanding our numbers we are very happy to take your queries separately offline because you are if i were to answer each of your question then this call would be over because i have answers to almost everything that you have asked and the only reason i would not go line by line and answer your questions is because the others will not be able to ask the question and they seem to be very specific to your membership so my request would be that let us not get into your specific issue of your membership we will definitely be happy to talk to you and understand your issue and resolve them and also explain you what this business model is all about let me give just one small example for example you made a statement that these upgrades you know people are upgrading because they are having some difficulty or something like that uh, you will be surprised that's not true now we have data now obviously all of that data cannot be made public but we consistently track net promoter scores of our customers and we know where we stand and number 1 number 2 when it comes to people wanting to upgrade uh, people take a conscious choice to upgrade because either they want to holiday in the higher season or they want to holiday in the lower season with higher number of room nights uh, the other thing is our referrals are at an all time high so our referrals are high we are briskly adding members and we are briskly adding inventory that is the business model there is nothing fundamentally wrong that you can attribute to us what we can understand sometimes is that a particular member may have a particular issue and that needs to be dealt with in a very specific manner so this is how i would like to close from my side thank you our next question is from the line of himanshu shah with dollar capital please go ahead thank you sir thanks for the opportunity uh so just i want to check on the member addition trend uh we have guided for around 20000 or four member additions uh we seem to be tracking behind on that guidance so do we main, still maintain our guidance for the year of more than 20000 member additions so we are very confident uh, himanshu that whatever we have stated which is roughly around 20000 is the number that will happen you know jan feb march is a very high seasonal quarter for us and uh, january has gone off well so we are quite confident of around that number what you just mentioned and we are taking all the steps to ensure that because please remember we are adding inventory very briskly and you will see uh, inventory additions in quarter 4 also and they are typically heavy so we have to constantly ensure that the inventory and member uh additions are matched and as we speak uh, you know the team you know all of us are busy doing that so the answer is yes basically yes, sir and secondly sir uh, the retirees run rate has also seemed to have increased over the last two quarters closer to around 14 1500 members retiring per quarter so will this be the run rate going forward or there is some one off over here so retirees are a function of what product when did they come in you know what time uh, there so obviously we try to retain the retirees we try to offer them a new product so retirees going up or down will be a function of when we acquired whom for what tenure to be honest this kind of data we ourselves don't track much we are only interested in seeing how many of these people can be retained and you know you think about it by the way when the retirees happen in a way uh, their uh, you know inventory is available to the next uh, member who comes in and we are anyway focusing on retaining existing and adding new members so sir 
So in this backdrop, can you just provide some color like what would be the annual retiral run rate? Because this number is or used to be around 15, 1600 numbers on an annualized basis, but now this number seems to be inching up 3, 4x. So will that be, will this the new run, run rate be no, the run no, rate going forward? I don't think we have any guidance on retirals because as I said, it's a complex uh, factor as to when a person came in and when is, and there are different tenures of the products uh, that we have. There are 33 year members who started, who are still not retired. There are 25, some of them are cl coming closer to retirement. Then there are 10 year members that we had taken in the past. You know, they are, some of them could be retiring or retired. Uh, so there are, there are differing tenures. And that, to my mind, explains, uh, and you know what, at the bigger scheme of things, just think about it, on a 2,90,000 base, I mean, you would also see the materiality if the number changes by 500 or 1,000 in the total cumulative gain. That's what I meant. Yes. And so this last question on resort income again, uh, our inventory has increased significantly on a YOY basis. Our occupancy is only marginally down. So uh, effectively, the room night which we have, uh, occupied, the occupied room nights have uh, have been on a higher side on a uh, on a quarterly basis versus last year. Yet our resort income has gone down by four percent, which implies probably the spend per head is down by around eight ten percent point. So anything uh, any specific reason for such a steep decline in spend per oh, head? There is, uh, just to confirm to you, there is no decline. Uh, so two things. Just remember, I just mentioned in the earlier answer that there are. There is a subsidiary under which some resorts are there, and that income doesn't get reflected in standalone. When I add that, it comes to 96 crores. It's not 88 crores, number one. Number two, the loss of revenue happened as a result of room nights, which could not be used during heavy rains in July, August, September in Himachal. You know there were landslides. It's all there on the media, and people barely came to the resorts. And then they took long time to come back by even till November and they were not coming. And last but not the least, uh, Sikkim became a problem because we have now significant presence in Sikkim in uh, October early. So there are problems that came caused by natural factors, seasonal factors, which obviously will affect the occupied room nights and as a result of which the number is likely to be up or down. But there is no trend of people spending less. In fact, if I were to uh, compare, the trend is that people are spending more, but because of these disturbances that we had, therefore there's a bit of an impact. But as I said, our number is not 88, it is 96. Yes, sir, I'm comparing standalone numbers only last year versus this year. Then that would have been the case even in the numbers of last year also, right? Those numbers would have also not been part of the subsidiaries. Yeah, yeah, they would not have been. But, but you're right. But we add also when we add new resorts, what happens is, Imanchu, uh, the new resorts do take some time to get occupied. So if you notice, as I said, that I was not, I'm not very happy with our occupancy at 84 percent. For this quarter, I expected better, but we lost out largely due to the Himachal, Uttarakhand, and Sikkim. That's the real answer. Yes, no issues. Thank you, and all the best for your future Thank endeavors. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ayush Chaturvedi with Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, so, firstly, on the overall numbers, actually, the numbers seem to be good, but our margin has contracted by around two to three hundred basis points. Any any reason, any specific reason that could have caused this? Uh, on the margin, uh, Ram Mundra, our interim CFO, would be speaking. Yeah, hi, Ayush. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, I think you are looking at the margins of standalone. Uh, am I right? Yeah. So, if you see in last year, quarter three last year, we had a one-off income, which was 27 crore. And if you, I have, we have the slide number 15 on the investor presentation. We have given the other table below, wherein as a good governance, we exclude 
our you know one off income and expenses and we compare with the normal operating performance there if you see our margin has actually increased from 29.3% to 30.5% so my request you to exclude those income and compare the margin basis the total income excluding one off and uh, the ebitda numbers basis that sure that's very helpful uh, um secondly i mean since the company is going through a major transition and uh, we are looking to double the room inventory so like this could change uh, you know this could slow down or have an impact on execution so any 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 color on that would be highly appreciated yeah uh, i i don't think there is any risk of that because the way we work is in a way not dependent on one person so we have a very strong operating team on the ground where a lot of work has already happened with regard to the inventory acceleration and uh what happens is that in a transition like this uh the new person which is manoj bhat who comes in from the group understands the uh, dna of the group and he is obviously uh, rightfully so would be driving the same agenda which is well laid out by the board and the operating team remains the same so therefore it's a question of just ensuring that the way things are they continue because there is no change in strategy just because there is a change in person there's no change in strategy and we have enough depth of talent which will keep the momentum going is what i would like to say sure thanks a lot thank you our next question is from the line of simmer with nigan capital please go ahead yeah hi so uh, very good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity i uh, just have a couple of questions one being uh, your recent member acquisition which is through the reference digital routes which has currently stands around 57% uh, i can see uh, this is one of the highest uh, ever Q- member acquisition that you have posted so what is can you just provide me the insights into the key factors that has positively impacted the growth for this period okay so as we have mentioned earlier that uh, there is a huge opportunity of the number of households with discretionary income if you really look at the uh, you know for us sky is the limit you think about the number of people today who can afford our product uh, we have identified 16 to about 18 million uh, households that would be in a position to buy our product now where are we today only 290 or whatever 300000 roughly so the potential is huge what we are beginning to do is we are doing a lot of digital uh, focus in our actions we are also focusing a lot on improving member experience which we have done significantly as a result of which our referrals are very high so the digital piece the referral piece is firing as uh, we have mentioned 57% of the uh, you know acquisition happened through that and we also you know october november december we were also on the tv and the media during the world cup icc world cup and we had a very uh, good commercial that also delivered a lot of content being created for people to know what we are and what we do and parallelly we are also driving lots of focus on you know tier 2 tier 3 uh, you know town expansion there a lot of sales force effectiveness measures we are taking we are using the power of data to understand propensity to buy for the leads that we get so there is a lot happening on all these fronts which is helping us to take advantage of the tailwinds that are there in terms of higher discretionary uh, spending propensity that we have today for our uh, targeted uh, you know profile customer all right all right i'm thanks for that uh, i have another the other question that i have is uh, the short and the medium tenure products that you have um where i mean the trend has act, act, as you might have already seen it's been increasing throughout the your journey so where do you see the the trajectory heading to in the future so can you give us a slight number on it i'm sorry on the on the on the if you were to look at the short term or the longer tenure products it's a conscious call to have a portfolio of products we are very happy 
that our you know portfolio is extremely strong now and in a way we are very uh, safe from the question that used to be asked you have only 125 year product what if people start buying you know the commitment phobia all that questions have been asked and today we have de-risked ourselves significantly by having a 15 year product by having a 10 year bliss product by having a three year gozes product by having a four year uh, product now people have a choice now the beauty is that once they come in they experience and they upgrade therefore upgrades are not just about uh, creating more traffic the upgrades are also about people wanting to enjoy more and that is the other thing that we are watching uh, how our referrals are growing how our upgrades are growing and basically how are we mining the existing members that we have but we have open gates for people to come through multiple gates into club mahindra earlier there was only one gate which was 25 year gate so to us you know it's a portfolio strategy and it's a mix which is a very healthy mix as you can see and with the upgrades and please remember upgrades are also a part of this mix because initially you take membership fee and thereafter when you upgrade that's also an income and more importantly that adds to your uh, overall uh, revenue so for us we treat them as you know in our minds it's one stream of revenue in the customer lifetime value so that is how we are seeing it and to us you know if a member also gives us referrals so uh, when people give referrals that also helps us to grow our business so there are huge values uh, to open multiple gates for people to come in through them bring more members from their from their own let's say friend circle relative circle and uh, or equally uh, you know uh, upgrade themselves to a longer tenure so that's how we see this business it's a business where you are getting foot in the door and then trying to get people to constantly look at up trading and that's very very helpful and very very valuable in our business uh, yeah thanks thanks for that a uh, small follow up uh, in terms of your uh, fnb and your entertainment contributions where do you expect that to i mean how much do you expect that to grow so if you look at our resort revenue primarily it is fnb a little bit on the holiday activities and a little bit on the sales that we do to non members because uh, when there is a booking there when there is a possibility to uh, fill up the inventory if it is not filled up through the members we do that so if you look at the revenue split it comes from these three uh, you know sources uh, so uh, for us the where is the uptick going to be so the uptick will be definitely fnb because fnb is an area where we are putting in the maximum amount of attention apart from of course holiday activities but i would say fnb is a very high attentive area it's a high margin area also so we are putting in all our uh, you know bets on driving fnb spends keeping member inside the resort through multiple activities and helping uh people enjoy and once they enjoy they stay in the resort they bring friends they uh, refer their friends and they also upgrade so there are multiple things happen when people stay in the resort and when people uh you know come in and want to sort of enjoy the various facilities and that is what will lead to the ticker uh, if i may say in the fnb revenue and that you will see in the total resort revenue Thanks a lot for that uh, and all the best and I uh, hope to see um, see you uh, in the next quarter as well. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vinod Dadlani with CA and Company. Please go ahead. Vinod, your line is unmuted. You could please ask your question. Hello. Yes, please. I am I audible? Yes, you Hello. are. Yes, yes, you are audible. Mr. Singh, I think you make a fantastic presentation. Okay, and I think you somehow round up all the things in a way that you you think that you have been a great performer. And I think I don't know whether you are you remember I was there at the last AGM. I am a member. I am a shareholder. and i'm ashamed to say that a company like yours is in the mahindra group 
I think it's one of the worst companies I have ever seen. I think the members are not satisfied. Uh, your customers are not satisfied. Most of the time, you give away the, your rooms to uh, companies and corporates and marriages without uh, without bothering for the members. Are you aware of that? Are you 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 shut your eyes conveniently? Uh, you know, G. Uh, may I may I request you to be little courteous in the way you are addressing me? And be very specific on the question that you have. I can only answer specific questions, not general accusations. So, uh, Mr. Vinod Dadlani's line has dropped from the question queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our next question, which is from the line of Naman Gala with Ventura Securities. Please go ahead. Naman, your line is unmuted. If you could please ask your question. Hello, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Please. Hello. Can you provide, provide me some further details on the PPP model that you are working it with government of Uttarakhand and share how it is proceeding ahead? Yeah, so we signed with Uttarakhand government about an MOU few months ago, say September, if I remember correctly. And from then on till now, we are working very close with Uttarakhand, uh, closely with Uttarakhand government on four, uh, you know, parcels of land that we have identified in various locations. And our aim is to work with Uttarakhand government, create a comprehensive plan which will enable them to uh, do the agreement with us to be able to break uh, the ground in these locations to build the new resorts. And that is where we stand right now. Oh, okay, sir. And what are your further plans? Like, uh, could you share some like highlights of the new government policies to increase the local tourism like Lakshwadeep and Ayodhya? Uh, are your plans to venture out into those uh, lo those areas or cities, basically? So, we have a defined destination strategies, which is very, very well thought out about where we want to be. And we do look at emerging destinations. And I would treat uh, Lakshadweep definitely an emerging destination and we have a deep interest in some of these destinations, including Ayodhya, Kevadia, you know, the Statue of Unity. These are all destinations that are emerging. Uh, so, we, when we look at and continuously scan destinations, these destinations are on our radar. And our choice would be if we are able to work with the local government and get hold of the land or work with a local entrepreneur who will be willing to build the uh, resort for us. So we are scouting at these locations and more. Okay, sir, that's very helpful. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Ankit Kanodia with Smart Sync Service. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for allowing the follow-up. Uh, sir, my next question is related to HCR. So, uh, again, it has been a long time since 2016. And we understand regarding COVID and now a little bit related to the geopolitical scenario. But uh, to, to 2016 to 2024, it's about eight years. Uh, do we, uh, so, from a, I'm not asking from any mitigating point of view or any, any kind of quarterly numbers and all, but as a whole, how do we look at this acquisition and how, how do we look at it from here uh, going forward? If you can give some color, that would be great, sir. Uh, it's, a, it's a very pertinent question, and I uh, would answer it to the best of my ability. And, of course, when I answer, I must tell you that we are, uh, you know, looking at Holiday Club very, very carefully because, as you rightly said, that we picked up this asset and we had a certain vision of it. Unfortunately, 
two years of COVID and now the third year of uh, Russia-Ukraine war has created conditions which are obviously not optimal. For example, if you see today, the inflation in these countries has gone up to 5-6%. Now it's coming down to 3.5%. Never expected, number one. Number two, the consumer spending power has been eroded because of the energy prices, because they are all not getting the, you know, the Russian energy that they used to get. Third, specifically in Finland, there are, uh, you know, resorts which were benefiting from Russian tourists because Russia, the, the European part of Russia was very well integrated with Scandinavia. And that's something that we have sort of had to take a beating. Now, these are very series of unfortunate, uh, I would say, uh, events, which you cannot plan when you uh, look at a business, and the business came in at a very attractive price, and we still believe that the macroeconomic situation cannot remain for long at this level. It has to change both the geopolitical and macroeconomic. They are connected in this case. That's something that will happen. But meanwhile, what we have done, what we have done is we have sharpened our focus on cost because that's a great opportunity to restructure operations, relook at the business model, see how we can become more efficient. There's a lot of work that has happened. Because, and had, had that not happened, we would have been obviously in a much more difficult situation. We are today, I would say, not in a difficult situation. If I look at it, even last year, we delivered five million odd EBITDA. Fourth quarter, as I said, always is very good. Even right now, it's looking good because huge bookings from the Britishers, Germans, Dutch, etc. for the Lapland area, skiing season. So we are seeing, again, good momentum. Quarter four is going to be a good quarter in Holiday Club. Yes, parallelly, this question as to how do we get more out of Holiday Club is there on our mind and it is a function a little bit about macroeconomic or geopolitical situation improving. Parallelly, however, uh, we are making steps that we are, you know, uh, cutting the flap in terms of costs and we are ready when the bounce back happens. So we are right now far more tighter, far more efficient business than what we were when we came in. So we have done. And the other thing is we have dra uh, drastically reduced the debt that we had on the books of Holiday Club Resort. So that's another big achievement. You can see that on our website. I don't want to give you the numbers. They're there. So there is a significant operational improvement happening, not reflecting yet uh, from an investor standpoint. So this is a, I would say, and by the way, even timeshare sales, despite all this, is still good because people can't afford a second home, so they buy timeshare. So all that is absolutely wonderful. We have a very smart team. They're very efficient team. So I think everything is right for a minor, let's say, improvement in the geopolitical situation, a little bit in the macroeconomic, which will happen, cannot remain so long like that. And then you should see a, a big move upside in the holiday club also. Thank you so much, sir. For that really helps. And all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kavinder Singh for his closing comments. Uh, as I've always mentioned that uh, we appreciate your interest uh, in our company. We appreciate the insightful questions. We are always available to answer questions uh, on any subject. Just that in the investor call, we remain very focused on the business and the numbers and therefore we have as you know we have avoided questions related to a particular member a particular concern that someone may have we are all consumers of services we understand that we may have one odd issue in our dealings with a particular company my request is that we remain very focused on the investment philosophy investment thesis how does the company look to grow the business and I can confirm to you our net promoter scores, our overall business is in a very, very good shape. Our numbers are looking very good, whether it is member additions, whether it is inventory additions, whether it is cash, whether it is profit growth, uh, whether it is deferred revenue, which we don't talk much about, 
because there's a lot of revenue going for the future which will keep coming in and our property is the way uh, they are doing in terms of the experience that we provide. So overall in a very, very good and healthy position and look forward to remaining in touch with you in the next quarter as well. Thank you. Thank you. The conference of Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited has now concluded. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect your lines.